Lauren Richardson. Busy man. Yeah, the planes are busy. He's got a plane to crash into. Yeah. Trading smoke. Gonna... Building to crash into. No, he's not. He's not a terrorist. Don't be on the Actually, yeah. Colors. 
Pocky Randall is in the yellow. And Ken Richards, who I mentioned gliding, is in the dark one at the back. Here they come in box, and as they pass crowd centre line, I'm actually going to be quiet and let you listen to the revel in the sound of those engines. Pass, pass, Caleb. <laughs> it's actually taking a long time to focus, even on sports mode. Occupied by the instructor, who can see over the head of the student. Unreliable, and their pilots too were largely young and 
experience. Their average age job entering the front lines of just 20. They're training on these challenging aircraft, largely rudimentary of aerial combat, the dogfight. This they would do without oxygen and without parachutes. It's this form of warfare using today the replica aircraft depicting different types used at various stages of the First World War and the Great War display team seeks to depict. We ask you to imagine you're standing in a British second line trench somewhere in the Somme sector of northern France, looking eastwards towards the British front line towards the German trenches. Two British aircraft, the Royal Aircraft Factory deep through the city,
One can only reflect what change has taken place. Introduced a whole new concept. Of 617 Squadron. Joy Roar, the most famous squadron in the Royal Air Force. Name the damn buses. with us today and will be helping me with the commentary when we have the Vancouver Memorial site. 617 Squadron currently at Lucas up in Scotland where they're flying tornadoes. But over now to the pit test one. little biplane. About 23, 4 foot span. With the tiny span, you can of course roll the aeroplane very quickly. Stretch to about plus or minus 5G. Under the 
wing there on the hard point. Straight tricky little aeroplane. Started by all those who flew in. This one of course has a pressurised cockpit. The young man, the two-seater, was the Abinicio aeroplane. The site of the program, because we're three of the Tiger 9 are arriving, I beg their pardon. This is the British equivalent of the Bokka. These are members of the Tiger 9, we're still collecting them. In fact, they may well be a Tiger 8 today because is unavoidably stuck in India. Oh dear. To help him turn as another tiger comes in. Thank you very much. Beautifully done. Notice the wing walker.
later went on to fly 747s in air shows. Some of you who were at Eastport a few years ago might have seen him flying there. As the Booker Trio come in, very politely held, the Germans have waited for allow our Tiger Moth to land. The Booker Trio, the best man being flown by the uh, monoplane being flown by Will Greenwood. Double pilot, Mason Lewis, one of the stars. The Youngman, the bigger of the two biplanes, being flown by Dan Griffith. Dan did some of my test pilot training. He was a remarkable man. Delighted to see him back at shore. You can uh, hear the pilots. We're pulling the best man into a chandelle there. so they can form into one great big pack and form themselves into what they call box formation. Now there will be several instances here where I will advise you to get your cameras out and to watch as they perform some very tight maneuvers together. A lovely sound of flight being them. They buffet it around but never left holding their station. And indeed, when they come back, it's not for me. And that's going to be part of what we miss the glorious start of eight. To have them hitting off with a huge amount of money come round. The, um, the leader, as we mentioned, is Steve Bohill Smith. Most of the pilots are current or retired airline pilots. But they have a smattering of others. We've got one, we've well, got two private pilots, uh, including one who is a doctor. They are, well, many of the pilots have tens of thousands of flying hours, and yet they choose to fly the De Havilland Tiger Moth. Why, you might ask. And the answer they'll all give you is that this is real flying. It's right back to basics. And this is the same reason why the RAF chose me to have a look Tiger Moth as its primary trainer during the Second World War. And with so many Second World War aircraft performing and on staff play for you here today, it's very fitting that we should have a clutch. <laughs> Remember I mentioned that inverted circuit? Well done. Only they do it in formation. Information. 
that to all the girls we love. And particularly the one who's making the tea and coffee for us at the moment. <laughs> Cheers, Terence. I'm sure everybody has. Yes, we know. It's become That's a great oh, it's a air show favourite all over Europe. B25 and B17. Wow. 
liberated the other of the trio. That's good. Also, four engine aeroplanes, but a very different aircraft to the Lancaster. Boeing B-17, first flew in 1935, very traditional Boeing machine, big wings, big engine. Departing on uh, daylight raids from the United Kingdom. There would sometimes be a trail. This aircraft was built in uh, 1948 and was issued to Air Material Command in February 1949. That makes it the world's oldest operational generator. Flying between uh, 300 and a little over 400 knots today, pulling about 4G, so to keep within a reasonable visual range of the aircraft. The aircraft is dressed as seven, but in, different, in deference to the age of the airframe, not to mention the pilot, it keeps it to about four. No. So we go from the functionality of the swordfish to the, the elegance of the hunter. <laughs> Matt, don't be silly, please. I'm going to... Big fires getting in.
legs. Time to get to another aircraft. 